بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. In the previous video we have discussed the whole idea of how we can understand eh, from matter to mind to intuitive heart. That means from the secular materialistic model of CBT, atheistic model. We are bringing in high CBT holistic model. That means our model where we say that we have this intuitive cow, and this intuitive the whole idea here is basically Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has created this intuitive heart and this whole thing. Okay, comprehends our very existence on this earth, and for that we have to have a radical change in the paradigm, in the thinking paradigm of the nature of man, as mentioned earlier, and also. How are we going to develop the framework? That's why this framework we have developed in our book, Positive Islamic Psychology, a Transcendent Model to Achieve Peace, Happiness and Success. So what are the basis in which we are going to develop Positive Islamic Psychology? Because the whole model is from this book and we have more principle and the model which we will pass. Eh? So it's all in this book but we have to summarize it for our new book that is Uh, post Islamic Psychology series, we are going to develop this one book, handbook for Pi CBT, Positive Islamic Cognitive Behavior Therapy. This one whole book on how we can approach psychology and Islamic perspective using the principles of Positive Islamic Psychology, principle number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. And these are in the chapters. All right. Positive Islamic Psychology principle number one is to under understanding. Universe. That means we have to move away from this idea that this world is existed without a creator. So there is very deep discussion in this book, but I'm just going to give you a spice of it, eh? just a little bit, and we discuss and how this can be the basis of understanding. Because I'm going to go through chapter one, positive Islamic psychology, principle number one, principle number two, principle number three, principle number four, and then the model. So Pi CBT exactly follow the same. Principle. That means if we talk about positive Islamic cognitive behavior therapy, the first principle is understanding the creator and the created universe. Why it is important? Because then we have to move away from hopelessness to hope. If you have no no God, you have no creator, you you don't believe in anything, then you're depending on yourself. You are just a teeny puny little human being that that have nothing to clench on. So Islam has you have something to rely on, something to hope for. Where Allah tells us He is closer to us than our juggler vein, so we have a merciful, loving, compassionate Creator, wh whom you can always refer to, whom you always can hope for, whom you always can seek help from, because He is nearer to us than our juggler vein. So it is very important for Muslims when we talk about positive cognitive behavior therapy, we always go back to Allah. We go always go back to the Creator, and. The whole model and the, the 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 protocol in which you're going to develop will be based on this. So if I just take just a few snippet of this idea, okay, from this book, so I just take a few paragraph and then inshallah that will give you an idea. But I want you to read this book inshallah, and then you get the whole understanding of our very solid argument on that this universe. Have a creator, and that creator is Allah or God. You can call him God. Huh? All right. So for the past 100 years, most branches of scientific endeavor have based their principle on atheism. The notion that in order to be scientific, we have to be atheistic is false. Now it's proven false because now we are moving towards the post-materialist world. The materialism, the atheism, now is gone. Scientifically, we know that we exist. Beyond time and space, and we exist beyond the material world. The notion of the creator, i.e., God creating this universe, is now more and more realistic and scientific. For us to believe in a transcendent human persona, we have to believe in a transcendent creator. Today, the belief in the existence of a creator is something that has been scientifically proven. Eh? Because in Islam, Allah tells us, and they were commanded not, but that they should worship Allah and worship none but. Allah or Him alone, and perform prayer and observe alms giving. That is the right path. So, we are told about our need to surrender and submit ourselves to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Mm. 
So modern secularized men have lost touch with their inner self. As a result, they are only using one dimension of intelligence based on IQ. This brute monodimensional intelligence gives rise to arrogance and atheism. Intrinsically, God has given men the ability beyond the five senses to realize emotional and spiritual realities which ultimately lead to the understanding of the reality of God. However, secularism and atheism has cut off its inner intuitive capability. As a result, modern man can only see the physical reality as the only reality in which he lives and dies. So that, that is where this whole idea of uh, the hopelessness of this modern man. And one of the propounders of this atheism, he has long gone already, but after the 20th century atheistic mathe uh, mathematician and philosopher, he says, all right, in his desperation of his nature of his own existence. Man is a product of causes which have no provision of the end and they were, that they were achieving. That his origin, his growth, his hope and fears, his love and his beliefs are but the outcome of accidental collection of atoms. That no fire, no heroism, no intensity of thoughts and feelings can preserve the individual beyond the grave. All that all the labors of the ages, all the devotion, all the inspiration, all the noonday brightness of human genius are destined to extinct, are destined to extinction in the vast death of a solar system, and that the whole temple of man's achievement must inevitably be buried beneath the debris of a universe in ruin. So this is an atheistic philosophy where he has no hope. In even in his writing, he say he has no hope. But we Muslims have hope. So we have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this hope is based on science. So for example, the famous physicist, Professor John Pottingham, uh, he, uh, John Polking, Polkingham, the, the John Polkingham, he says, no one has seen a quirk and we believe that no one will ever will. They are so tightly bound to each other inside the protons and neutrons that nothing can make them break out of their own. Why then do I believe in these indivisible quirks? In summary, it is because quirks are made make sense in a lot of direct physical in the in the lack of direct physical evidence. I wish to engage in a similar strategy with regards to the unseen reality of God. His existence makes sense. Many aspects of our knowledge and experience, the order of the fruitfulness of the physical universe, the multi-layered create character of the, of reality, the almost universal human experience of worship and hope. I think that very similar thought processes are involved in both cases. I do not believe that. I shift from some strange intellectual way when I move from science to religion. In their search for truth, science and faith are intellectual cousins under the skin. So, there are many, many more. This is chapter number one, understanding the created and created universe. But what's important is for us to know that science is coming closer and closer and closer to the understanding of the nature of the spiritual existence as propounded in the Al-Qur'an, Al-Qur'an Al-Karim and in the Hadith because you must understand there are the ancient traditions all these ancient traditions bring us to the understanding of one creator, Tawheed who created all these things into existence he manifested them, he willed them and they come into being so what is important is that we Muslims hold the key to this understanding because the ancient tradition, many of them were corrupted. We are not saying they are bad or wrong, but we have the most accurate worldview of the nature of man and the understanding of the uh, creator in, 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 the, in the attributive form. I remember the, the Zat or the essential nature of Allah or God is beyond us. We cannot, we cannot really reflect on that. But his attributes. So, based on that attributive aspect in Islam, first and foremost, it is we believe in the one God, Tawheed, and the expression of Tawheed is to love Allah and He loves us. And from then, we understand the progression in which you have to make in terms of our surrender and submission to Him, in terms of seeking for His forgiveness, in terms of seeking His mercy, in terms of seeking His compassion, and then finally bonding with this ultimate truth to understand his love that we love Allah and Allah loves us and when we reach that level that is the greatest of all joy all peace all happiness than we can ever imagine inshallah so I hope we all try to understand this and I will go into the second chapter and third and fourth and fifth chapter before we go back to 
the whole idea of PICBT, the protocols, and how we compare ourselves with cognitive behavior therapy, inshallah. Uh, this will be the basis of the new book, as I mentioned, inshallah, Positive Islamic Psychology Series on Positive Islamic Cognitive Behavior Therapy with the Will of Allah and Grace.